So it looks like there's a new Freely in town. Her name is Paige Shea. She's on TikTok. She is blonde like Freely. She's thin like Freely. And she eats Freely's Rolto for diet, fruit for breakfast, fruit for lunch, and potatoes and lettuce for dinner. Now, having watched literally hundreds of Paige's TikToks and, I don't know, dozens of her What I Eat Todays, I have found some pretty major differences between the two fruit ladies. For one thing, Paige really emphasizes greens. I think leafy greens are so important and I think that we should be including them in our diet every day because you're going to get a lot of good vitamins, minerals. She says they really help her with cravings for like junk foods and stuff, I guess, which was definitely the case for me. Oh yeah, did I mention that I used to eat this way? I used to eat a fruit-based raw vegan diet. Well, I did. I did Freely's 30 bananas a day. This is when she was still raw. Cooked food was toxic. Pretty raw till four. And yeah, that plan did not emphasize vegetables and, and lettuce at all. It was really focused on fruit. And I pretty much always wanted savory things. I craved tomatoes. Once I started incorporating a giant salad at the end of every day, I felt so much better. I think I saw one What I Eat Today from Paige where she didn't eat greens and it was because she was traveling. Otherwise, she eats them every day. She has half of a pound of mixed greens at night. Sometimes she has greens with lunch as well, a whole head of romaine. So that's on top of the half of a pound of mixed greens. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's much better than what Freely does, which is greens, but like there's no emphasis on it. This is really adding a lot more variety, even though she's eating basically the same greens every day. Another huge difference is salt. Freely is anti-salt. She does not add it to any foods, which could be a huge problem. It's estimated that we need about 500 milligrams per day just for vital functions. And if you do like a lot of endurance training, if you sweat a whole lot, like a lot of raw foodists do, like Freely does, she likes her running and cycling, you could need a lot more sodium. And if you don't get that sodium, you could get really sick. You could die from hyponatremia. I remember Michael Arnstein, he is or was a fruitarian and a marathon runner. He got it. Here's another case of a raw foodist getting very, very sick and actually being hospitalized. If you're only eating greens and fruit, you very likely are not getting 500 milligrams per day. If we look at this example from page, 2,500 calories, yet less than 250 milligrams of sodium. Now, while Paige does seem to encourage salt-free, she doesn't actually exclude salt from her diet. She seems to put like a quarter of a teaspoon in this entire soup and in her curries, which doesn't seem like a lot, but she eats the entire soup or curry in a meal. So it looks like she's getting about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt every day. So she's getting well over the 500 milligrams and she's not an endurance athlete, but I'll talk about that more in a minute. Now, Freely is not known for being particularly nice, whereas Paige, I never judge anyone for where they are, seems pretty nice. So that's nice. Unfortunately, this one is not so nice. Maybe I missed it, but to my knowledge, Paige makes no mention of B12 in any of her TikToks. The closest I could find was this reply in the comments on one of her TikToks where she talks about sometimes taking zinc, vitamin C, vitamin B, whatever that is. I hope for her sake she is taking B12 and is consistent about it. Regardless, promoting a vegan diet, literally any vegan diet, without explicitly stating that people need to take B12 if they are not eating animal products is dangerous. I, I really, really, really wish she would mention B12, at least in her What I Eat Todays. Now, to be fair, while Freely has talked about B12, specifically B12 injections for many years, she doesn't really emphasize it either. I watched a few of her recent What I Eat Todays, she doesn't mention it. And it seems when she has talked about it, she's talked about it in the weird way that some vegans like to talk about it. Like it's not that plants lack B12, it's that our bodies are like damaged from this modern world, we're scarred, and so we can't absorb it. It's this myth that we can absorb enough B12 from our digestive tract. No. So never mind, they both suck when it comes to B12. <laughs> The biggest difference, an actual difference between Paige and Freely, Paige lifts weights. Lifts weights. Wait. Paige lifts weights. <laughs> she started a year ago. She's clearly seen really good results. She has clearly been really consistent. And yeah, she's pretty strong. This is so great. It's so important for 
raw vegans or any vegans who are not getting a lot of calcium, not getting a lot of protein. These are things that are really important for bone health. Well, lifting is also extremely important for bone health. So yeah, this is a huge improvement over Freely's running cycling lifestyle. Although does she really do that anymore? It seems that she just kind of hangs out in the woods. I don't know. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is it. Those are the differences. Everything else that Paige does and says is 100% freely. 80% of my diet is coming from clean carbohydrates, 10% from fat, and 10% from protein. She follows raw till four, fruit until dinner, which is typically, again, a large salad, a whole lot of potatoes. She really likes this potato soup thing. Very little fat. Most of the fat she gets is actually at dinner in the form of a cashew sauce, just a, a tiny bit <laughs> of cashew. She's against counting calories and she doesn't believe you can get fat from fruit. She believes in food combining. She just says things. Everyone tells you that you have to have a high protein breakfast. No, not true. Why? Why, why is it not true? <laughs> You can't just say that. Eating a lot of fat with fruit causes diabetes. Pretty sure polyunsaturated fats are associated with preventing insulin resistance. But who to trust? You know, you've got the scientists who study this for a living, and then you've got the pretty girl on TikTok who regurgitates 80 10 10 talking points. Hard to say. Speaking of talking points, all of the familiar ones are here. You've got the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Eat enough calories, you'll get enough protein. Humans are herbivores. This is an abundance diet. It leads to food freedom. She can't eat fucking olive oil. She can't have grains more than twice a week. So freeing. Side note, the grains being less ideal, harder to digest, is really funny to me because she takes that to mean that they are less healthy, they're less ideal than fruit, like for everyone. Instead, of maybe thinking, oh, may maybe this is a me thing. Maybe I just struggle to digest grains because struggling to digest whole grains is not normal. Maybe she should just, you know, see a professional instead of downing 11 mangoes in a sitting. Paige does talk about health some. She did more in her older videos, right? Fat is bad for your liver. Dairy is mucus forming, that sort of stuff. But the focus is definitely on fat loss. Just being plant-based wasn't quite enough to get me to the results that I wanted in terms of having this more of a defined look in my stomach. So yeah, freely. The timeline is a little confusing. She says that she's only been lifting for a year while eating this low fat, high carb fruit diet. Yet she also says that she used to eat lots of animal products while lifting and doing HIIT training. And also she did keto at one point. And also she did a vegan diet, but it was based on whole grains and she was only running and doing like ab exercises. Regardless, she really, really, really does not want to attribute her results to the weight training. She actually says that the resistance training would not matter without the change to her diet. Sure, losing fat will reveal more muscle, but ga gaining muscle via strength training will also reveal more muscle. You can't say whole grains are bad for gains when you didn't even lift while eating whole grains. You know how Freely tries to portray herself as fat before eating fruit? She shows her before and after, and it's just weird because she was never fat. Paige does the same thing. In what world is this thick? <laughs> What's happening? And isn't thick good? Is it not good now? So while Paige's lifestyle is certainly better than Freely's mostly due to the weight training, it is far from ideal. I plugged the food in this pinned video into chronometer, half of a large watermelon. She says in other videos, this is about four pounds, seven bananas, five oranges, the soup using two pounds of potatoes, a mixed green salad. Again, she says this is about half of a pound and an artichoke. I added one ounce of cashews since she usually uses that cream sauce in the soup and in the salad maybe. I just put an ounce because typically the low fat people like this won't eat more than like an ounce of nuts a day. That keeps her under the 10%, around 20 grams of fat per day, which is where she wants to be. Altogether, this comes to 2,500 calories. She says she doesn't always eat this much, and I did look at a couple that were around like 1,700 calories, but most of the days are well over 2,000 calories, which does make me wonder, when I ate that much, when I ate 2,500 plus calories from fruit, I, I did not look like that. I gained weight, which really isn't surprising. I didn't do endurance training like freely. I did weights. I just find it really hard to believe that she's burning that many calories. She's like 115 pounds. She's burning 2,500 calories doing weights for an hour a day. I'm not saying she's lying about what she eats. I have no reason to doubt 
her. I mean, I know from experience that eating this amount of food is possible. I really wonder if it's an absorption issue, if her absorption is just really poor. Point is, it's a lot of calories, so many calories, and yet it's still deficient in several nutrients. Selenium is almost always very low. I looked at several other days as well. There's one where she gets enough thanks to an entire bunch of asparagus. Apparently asparagus has a decent amount if you eat a whole bunch of it, but most days not even close. Iodine is almost certainly very low. Again, she does eat salt, but unfortunately it's not iodized. It's that stupid real salt. She eats seaweed sometimes, but doesn't seem like very often. Vitamin E is very low. No surprise, right? She's not eating a whole lot of fat. However, she does eat a lot of mangoes during the spring and summer, and mangoes are actually a pretty decent source, and we can store vitamin E. So it might be possible that she's getting enough during the spring and summer that overall she's getting enough vitamin E. I don't know. Vitamin D is non-existent, but I would not be surprised if she gets a lot of sun. Again, these like low fat fruit people type tend to be sun bunnies. She doesn't look pale to me, so I don't know. Calcium actually is not too bad thanks to the insane amount of potatoes and oranges. You definitely want to get at least over 500 milligrams and she seems to do that. Omega-3 fatty acids, again, not shocking at all. She's eating like two grams of fat and no sources high in omega-3s like chia, flax, hemp seeds, protein. Now, except for, I think I found three days where she ate lentils. She actually ate like an overt source of protein. Uh, it's pretty sad. 2,500 calories and you can't even hit 60 grams. You're doing it wrong. And again, she's weight training. Science consistently shows better results for both muscle size and muscle strength with protein intakes way higher than what she's getting. Using examine.com's protein calculator, she should get at least 84 grams of protein per day. Probably more since cooking significantly improves protein absorption and a large part of her diet is raw. The thing is, most of this is incredibly easy to fix while keeping the diet low fat and without supplements. Half a Brazil nut a day for selenium, that's only 1.6 grams of added fat. One teaspoon of chia seeds also barely increases overall fat, but significantly increases omega-3s. She could blend it up in her cashew cream sauce. Switch the dumb salt to iodized salt, maybe increase it a little bit, or just eat some like nori a little bit more regularly. Eat some cooked calcium rich greens like kale, collard greens, she could easily add two good handfuls to her soup, her potato soup. It's still low fat. It's still raw till four. It's still focused on fruit and potatoes. It just won't give you hypothyroidism. Now, protein is a little harder. She doesn't do protein powders. And even if she did, she doesn't do smoothies. So it's harder to add that in. She could replace just some of the fruit with beans, but I doubt she wants to do that. I doubt she wants to decrease the amount of fruit. But again, she's only been doing this for a year. So maybe once she starts like stalling on her gains, particularly hypertrophy wise, size wise, uh, maybe she'll rethink protein. And one more thing, fertility, dietary fat is really important for hormone production. So eating such a low fat diet, probably not doing her any favors there. But why should I care? you may be thinking, right? It's her diet, it's her life, but she's also promoting this to people, to everyone. It seems like everyone should eat this diet. It is the healthiest diet. It's the best for weight loss. And she doesn't mention any downsides. The only thing she says once is that the frozen banana ice cream makes her cold. So she eats it in front of a fire. It's like freely with the gloves. Remember she was always wearing the gloves. Nutrient deficiencies aside, there are so many downsides to eating this way cost for one thing. I looked at her most recent What I Ate Today from just a few days ago and using the prices from my local Kroger, it came to $12.16 just for the fruit. That's not including the dinner. Add in the brown rice pasta and the mixed greens and it's $17.25. That's about $520 a month for one tiny person. Now, a lot of fruit people will say, well, you buy in bulk. Paige even has a video talking about that, talking specifically about Sam's Club. I tried that when I was raw. I had a Costco membership and there were some things that were a little bit cheaper, but overall they were the same price or more expensive than what I could get at the grocery store. And the grocery store had sales. Costco does not. And the quality was questionable. Every single peach I bought from Costco 
was mealy and disgusting. Point is, it is a very expensive diet. In fact, cost was the main thing that led me away from eating raw. There was just no way I could get enough variety, number one, and eat enough greens without spending 500 plus a month. There were months I spent over $800. Again, I craved tomatoes and tomatoes are not cheap. People are sometimes intrigued by diets like Paige's because they seem so simple and easy, right? It's just fruit. You just chop up some fruit. You just chop up a salad. You just make a simple soup. But they actually require a lot of preparation every single day. This salad took her 30 minutes. That's about how long it took me to make my giant salads, 30 minutes every day. This giant soup, this is not for four days. This is one meal. It's just so hard to batch cook, to cook in advance when you are eating this way, when you're eating this amount of food. And this is all just for her. An hour preparing dinner, a salad and soup just for you? What about people with like spouses who would also like to eat dinner? What about children? I have three of them. I can't spend 30 minutes making a salad just for myself and then 30 to 45 minutes eating a giant dinner. My point with all of this is what's the point? Like even if this diet were healthy, What's the point of getting people all excited about getting healthy and losing weight when there's virtually no chance they can stick to it? It's so expensive and so time consuming. It's also mentally consuming, mentally draining. The most I have ever thought about food was when I ate this way. That salad that I now, oh my God, no, no thank you. That was the most delicious thing Ever. Every day I looked forward to that salad. I just craved savory. Maybe she likes that, but I do not. You could not pay me enough to go back to just thinking about food constantly. To worrying about if I have enough fruit. That's another whole different thing. Sometimes, especially in winter, it's harder to get good fruit and the fruits that are good, it's harder to eat a lot of them, right? The oranges and the pineapple, the grapes, and then you sit down to eat oranges and they're nasty. So now you have to eat bananas again. I saw one comment that said eating her diet would make them both full and empty at the same time. And yes, that is, I think, the perfect way to describe it. You eat a banana meal, five, six bananas, whatever, you're so full. But then like an hour or two later, you're hungry again, but you're still like so full, like your stomach is still full, but you're hungry. It's hard to explain unless you've done it. Don't do it. Bottom line, you think about food a lot. And in my experience, it's harder to focus. Like on work, I can easily zone out and miss lunch sometimes, just completely miss it. I did not do that <laughs> when I ate this way. I did not skip meals. My brain, my stomach would not let me skip meals. Last thing, I just want to leave a little quote from Jenny Messina, the vegan RD. This is from a recent blog post. The belief that there is any such thing as a single healthy way to eat or that certain foods are dangerous and others are essential is exactly the belief system that gives rise to fads like a carnivore diet. You can probably guess why I put that here. Videos long enough going to leave it at that. In conclusion, while I appreciate Paige not being like Freely in terms of personality, she seems really nice. She seems like she wants to help people. She promotes strength training. The overall message that fruit is the best food and it can't make you gain weight and protein doesn't matter, it's bad. Anyway, I would love to hear from you guys what you think about Paige Shea. A patron actually let me know about her, so you can blame them for this video. <laughs> so much time watching her videos, and it all boils down to watermelon for breakfast, bananas or mangoes for lunch, potato soup and greens for dinner, cellulite and fat, just eat fruit, and you'll lose that and make the gains. Like that. <laughs> 90% of it. How does she have so many TikToks? Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff from me. Hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. Thank you so much to my patrons and my members here on YouTube. I do post two exclusive videos for tier two patrons and members. I do a little vlog and then I also do a controversial video that's like not related to veganism or environmentalism or anything, or maybe like slightly related. Yeah, I've done 12 of those. I started this last January, so I'm about to upload my 13th. Pretty exciting stuff. Bye.